If you are a web developer, data enthusiast, or IT professional looking to dive deep into Microsoft SQL Server 2022, we have fantastic news for you. Our online course, Master Microsoft SQL Server 2022, is now available at an unbeatable discount. Just make use of this coupon code SQL Master and enroll in course today. Do note that this offer is only limited for five days starting today. So hurry up. You can find the link in the description as well. In my previous video on HTMX, we learned about what exactly HTMX is all about and how it simplifies the front end development. Now, in this one, we'll be taking it to the next level where we will see it in action using ASP.NET Core as the back end. So, what we'll be doing over here, we'll be creating a new ASP.NET Core web application. Here we'll be selecting this template, ASP.NET Core Web App with Model View Controller. Click Next and select the folder where you will like to have your solution created and then click Select. Here you can give it a name. So I'll copy this same name for the project as well. And once that's done, let's click on Next now and click Create over here. So this is going to create default ASP.NET Core Web Application. Let's quickly run this to see it in action. And this is what we have generated using the default template. Now let's close this and close all these files as well. The next thing that we need to do over here is let's go ahead and create a task model. So here under models, I'll be creating a new file. So I'll say add new item and I'll give it a name as task dot cs click on add and here we have the class now we need to add a couple of attributes to it like id title and is complete now with id you can see that we have annotation called key which specifies that the id property is the primary key in our table so we have created this task model and on the other side over here in our database we have created the database called HTMX example DB and this contains a tasks table. Now the task table if I open up the design view you will see exactly ID title and is complete being part of the table and ID is obviously the primary key. So that we have done over here as far as the database part is concerned. Next what we have done is we have included some dependencies. So packages you can see over here, like Entity Framework, Core, Design, SQL Server, and Tools. These are all required. So that is what we have taken care of. You can also see it by going and saying Manage NuGet Packages. And here under the Installed tab, you'll be able to see all the ones that we have installed, like Core, Design, SQL Server, and Tools. Once you have installed these dependencies packages, using NuGet Package Manager. The next thing that you need to do is create a database context. Now, before creating a database context, you need to include the connection string. So here, I've created this connection strings default connection. I've provided the server, database, and encrypt equals false, trust server certificate equals true, Trusted connection equals true, multiple active results sets equal to true. So this obviously is not related with HTMX as such, but just the ASP.NET Core part of that we need to take care of. Once you're done with that, open up or create a new folder called data. And inside that, you can create a DB context file like I've done over here. And this is pretty basic. All it does is mentions that it has this definition for tasks. And other than that, just a constructor taking the DB context options as parameter. Now, once that's done, you are good with the database connectivity part. Now comes the controller part where we will be doing the server side stuff. So inside the controllers directory, you can go in and look for tasks controller or create one. So here I have created mine. Let's quickly see what exactly it's doing. So we have this database context coming up. We have this constructor where we are initializing the database context. Then we have this default views for index create. These are all get parameters. Similarly over here for edit view, we have the action result defined. 
So what's exactly it's doing? So when you are running the application and you are hitting this index, it is going to open up a view. And inside the view, you can see we have this task directory and it is going to hit the index.cshtml page. The index.cshtml page will list all the tasks that we have. So if I just open up the index.cshtml, you will see what exactly we are having. We have the reference to the task model. And here we are saying that make use of render partial and load all the tasks. Now tasks is a partial control. So if I open up this here, you will see that we have created this table with a header title is complete and action. And then we are using the razor template to loop through all the task records. And these two links that you see over here, they have something special. So if you see the edit, what it's doing, it's doing a get request. So it's going to the server side and it's saying that call edit method of the tasks controller and whatever result you are getting from there you need to load in this target target with the id task form now where exactly this task form is if you see the index.cshtml we have this div so this is just a placeholder div where all the actions will take place like edit create so on and so forth so here we are saying that when you get the result go to this div task form and populate that div with the data that you have received similarly when you are doing a delete this is going to do a post so this id will be sent to the tasks controller delete method and before doing that it is going to confirm are you sure so this is going to give you a prompt alert basically and once you confirm that the target for this is task collection so the result that we are now getting after deleting a particular task is a collection of remaining tasks and that will be populated over here under tasks if you see we have given this table an id called task collection so this table will be updated basically once you delete a task the server will send the updated list and that list will be iterated over here so that's pretty much it over here see how simple no javascript being written at all and all we have done is in the shared directory if you go to the layout.cshtml one script file has been included as you can see over here other than that you can see we have commented the jquery min as well as the site.js site.js was a placeholder script provided it was not containing any content as such so this is the only file that we are referring as far as javascript library is concerned and we are able to do all these ajax operations directly enhancing the html tags using specific attributes like get post target and confirm now let's go to the controller again and over here let's explore the other methods that we have written like over here the post method which is creating a task so it's just expecting a task object and if it's valid it's going to add to the database and then return a partial view of tasks so tasks is nothing but a collection of tasks that we have stored in the database similarly when we are saying edit so the content is being populated over here when we are saying edit the content is populated by using the view and this view will list the data fill the controls html input box and all and after that when you click on save the update function will kick in it is going to find that task and update it as you can see over here we are simply going in and updating the task and then returning the collection the updated collection basically and similarly we are doing the delete operation as well so we are saying get the id find if the task exists go ahead and remove it and finally return the updated task list so this side is obviously known to us what i have figured is like when you're creating these views, create, edit, ensure that you have set the layout property, especially for create and edit ones, which we are calling using Ajax method. The layout should be set to null. Otherwise, they all will refer to the main layout if this value is not provided. And you might see the header menu being repeated a number of times. So that's one precaution that we need to take. Other than that, we are all set now. So 
here you can see that we have used the generated code here you can see that we have just made use of the same html form without doing anything additional apart from just introducing these attributes and covering the whole core functionality basically we have created a to-do list using htmx so here if i now run this so this is the default page that we are getting but if i go now here and say tasks you'll see this list is coming up initially this is another task this complete is set to yes you click on edit you'll be taken to this page controller and here you can see that we are trying to find that particular task and if that task exists it will return a view let's go ahead and click that now continue and here you can see the placeholder that we had so if i now select this inspect element and let me minimize this over here so you see this task form that was the target that we mentioned when we clicked on the edit so this is basically populating this div with the content now if i go in and just add some dots to it just to show you the edit functionality so under the network tab we can go in and say save so as soon as we do save do note this portion over here so i click on save now and there you go this list has now been updated you can see the update being made over here the response is basically this whole html being returned by the server and the same is being updated over here now you can go ahead and click on delete as well but before doing that let's go and create a new task as well so if i click over here now you can see that same placeholder has now been replaced with the create task form and here i can add another task using htmx and click on create now so here you see as soon as you click create the create is called the post is done over here as you can see and the result is then shown over here so if i go right now and click on delete you will hear a prompt over there are you sure you want to delete this task you say okay as soon as you do that the task is removed the list is updated and all of this is done using htmx and obviously the server side is asp.net core mvc in my case you could have used anything like node.js php ruby on rails whatever framework you feel like you can have that and lls is returning and still make use of htmx to do all these wonderful operations i hope this clarifies the whole concept of htmx how it's envisioned to simplify the front-end development